Division 2 is filled to the brim with content, and it has so many interchanging systems and unique mechanics that it might be pretty overwhelming to some people. And despite Division 2 being a sequel to a massively popular game, there's still these very new features in the game that I wanted to shine some light on. If you plan to spend some time with Division 2 or are in the middle of leveling up your character, this video will help you get through the game a lot easier. I will also talk a little bit about the end game and how you can get higher gear score to reach the highest world tier the game has to offer. But first, if you liked the video, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. The support is greatly appreciated. So let's get into the tips and tricks everyone should know when they get into Division 2. First up, cover is king, so don't go Rambo or you will die easily. This game, as we all know, is a third person cover based shooter. Always use cover where it's possible, and that shouldn't be too hard considering there's usually a lot of cover options all over the place. Ubisoft designed an awesome world with plenty of cool things to take cover with. Even some of the weakest enemies in the game will take you out in a split second if you're not careful. So if you want to throw a grenade, heal, reload, or even communicate with your team for 4 seconds, make sure you do it in cover. This is particularly true when you are entering the end game because you will be overwhelmed with plenty of enemies that can take you down with one well placed shot. So trust me when I tell you, always take cover because that's the essence of this game. It's for you to be tactical and take cover and take enemies out while you're behind the safety of that cover. Don't try to run out there and think you're Rambo and take everyone out because you will be brought down easily by even the weakest of enemies. Because while you're in cover, wouldn't you know, their shots can't hit you. And when you're out of cover, they'll just shoot you like a flying duck. So make sure you're behind cover. Next, and this is a pretty important one, is that you make sure to explore. It's worth your time. Don't get me wrong, you will get some awesome gear as you go through the campaign, but like any good open world RPG like game, it's worth your time to explore the world. And let me tell you, The Division 2 takes that element and heightens it to the max. While you go to your next objective, make sure you go off the beaten path, because you will be rewarded for this. You will be given new materials, gear, and sometimes even side missions, all for just exploring. Not to mention this will put you in fights with patrols, protecting control points, or doing public executions that you could stop. Doing these activities will reward you in their own way, especially control points. After liberating a control point, you'll be given access to a room filled to the brim with new gear. Not to mention all of this helps you level up even faster. So this game actually promotes you to go exploring and see the rest of the world. You see an alley? Go down it. Chances are there are going to be some materials or loot for you down that alley. Maybe even some collectibles. It's all worth doing because you can take all this materials and use it in the game. It's really fun and actually makes you want to explore the world. And much like Anthem, make sure you use your skills and perks. It will help you out in tough situations. And I have to say, The Division 2 has no shortage of tough situations. So make sure you use all the tools at your disposal. This is even more important when you're playing solo. It's almost required to use your skills as often as you can when playing solo. There are 8 skills you can get from the Quartermaster, which are Turret, Chem Launcher, Seeker Mind, Drone, Pulse, Hive, Shield, and Firefly. And in each one of those, there's different variants of what kind of skills those have. For my build, I have a Machine Gun Turret and a Hive that will help me take enemies down much quicker. But both will also give me covering fire when I need it most. You should take the time to figure out what playstyle you want to go with and tailor your skills around that playstyle because it will help you become a better teammate and also a better player around the world. Trust me, it's worth taking the time and figuring out what you want to do with those. But while leveling up, use the side missions to level up consistently, plus you get good gear from them. Now I know there are people that just want to do the main missions and move on to the next one. The catch is that the division almost blocks you from doing that, especially since different areas are for different leveled people. So this is how I recommend people treat side missions and campaign missions in the game. When you get a main mission and it's in your level bracket, do it as fast as you can so you can reap the rewards from it. After doing that, make sure you do all the side missions in that area because not only are they pretty cool and nice set pieces, but they will also help you level up faster. Completing just the main missions will leave you under leveled and not ready for the next area you have to go to. 
So take the time to enjoy the game and treat it like an RPG by doing all the side missions you see. Not to mention all the little activities out there. This all helps you in the grand scheme of things. You will level up faster and get to the end game much more quicker if you just start doing most of the activities around you. Because hey, you're already there. Start running to them and take them out. And while you're doing that, keep track of your projects, especially when leveling up to 30. When you unlock a settlement, there will be a person that wants you to do a project for them. Projects are completely new and weren't part of the first game. So they've truly been something people have to get used to. Most projects have objectives for you to complete, be it donating gear, completing world events, or finding shade tech caches in a certain area of the world. For the world events within projects, stopping a radio transmission or stopping a public execution are all objectives you can complete as you're running around the world. The reason why I bring up projects is because completing them will reward you with experience points, blueprints, and crafting materials you can use later on in the game. Some projects will also give you more experience points than some side missions and side activities will. They're also worth doing at the end game because you'll get a bunch of experience, a bunch of materials, and sometimes even gear. So I recommend people keep track of this. And to that point comes my next thing. Don't always deconstruct or sell junk items. Division 2 is filled with loot, and I mean filled. You'll get so much loot, you won't know what to do with all of it. And your inventory will get jam-packed with all this loot, and first thing you'll think to do is sell or deconstruct it. Well, don't do that, because like we just talked about, some projects will require you to donate a few gear pieces. The quality or the level of the items doesn't matter as long as they fit what needs to be donated. So it's beneficial to return to the White House or settlements to turn in some of the extra gear you have no use for. After you donate everything, you can then do what you want with the gear. Yet I have to say, if your resources are full and you deconstruct something, you won't get all the materials you potentially can. So make sure you aren't full and if you are, just sell your items for more money because you can buy things later on. Next up is Shade Tech and I have to say, you need safe houses to unlock all of them in that area. While the map of Division 2 is quite massive, there are still small parts of the map you want to know about. And even though some places might look different and have harder enemies, each place has one thing in common. They all have Shade Tech all over the place that you will want to collect. But in order for you to see those Shade Tech cases, you will have to go to the safe house of that area to unlock them. There will be a computer there at the safe house and all you have to do is interact with it and bam, all the shade tech in that area will show up and you can go collect them all freely. There's other benefits to unlocking safe houses first in an area, like fast travel. So it's in your best interest to unlock all the safe houses in the areas that you go to, especially if you're new to the area. Make sure you take the time to skip everything and run straight to the safe house to unlock the shade tech and also the fast travel option to go there because it just helps you overall in the game and cuts a lot of wasted time that you might have. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I think are good things. And one of them is go buy new items at the vendor of each settlement after you reach a new world tier. It boosts your score considerably. This is a trick my friends and I figured out. While you're done with that first stronghold, you'll unlock world tier one. One quick tip, go to the each settlement, the White House, the theater, and the campus, and go straight to the vendors. They'll have gear items for that world tier that you can buy, which will be considerable upgrades for you. It'll boost your gear score and get you even further towards the end game, which is world tier five, I believe. Now, all you have to do is go do the main missions and then go do the next stronghold when you have the gear level. And world tier two will come out. Once you hit world tier two, go again to the White House, the theater and the campus, go to the settlements that you know, and go straight to the vendors and buy the gear there again. There will be higher gear level that will boost you considerably again. These are great ways and easy ways and cheap ways to get higher gear score quickly in the end game. That's something that me and my friends figured out and we've been doing ever since. So trust me, go do that. And my last tip is to play with friends or other people. It heightens the game experience. Playing with buddies and actually talking about an enemy flanking you or just having fun with your friends is what this game is all about. Playing solo is extremely challenging in this game, and I tip my hat to anybody that tries it. But while you're with friends, make sure you always play with them, 
play with one, two, three, or four people. It doesn't matter. Just have fun with it. And also, if you're at a tough place, go match make something. Join a group together, especially during the bounties or any hard things toward the end game, because everything is challenging in this game, and you don't want to get bored and struggle playing solo. So I recommend playing with your friends. And also, I hope this helped you. And if it did, please go down to the comments section and leave some tips that you guys think. It may be something that I missed or something that helped you along the way. Anybody's welcome to go down there and tell me about their experience with the game. And if you enjoy the video, hit that subscribe button and that like button. Any support helps the channel out more than you know. And you can also follow me on Twitter, at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my videos. Also, follow me on Twitch. The link will be in the description. If you want to hang out and chat with me, I'm very active with my chat and always playing games. I hope to see you guys there. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember, enjoy your gaming. Later.